Hey everybody, it's Marty from Aspect LED. Today we are going to talk about our aluminum mounting channel. We're specifically going to talk about our narrow and our wide mounting channel. This is a great option for dressing up using our N-Series and our W-Series strip lights. For our project today, we're going to use this aluminum mounting channel to put lights into this bookshelf right here. The first thing we need to do with a project like this is measure where we're going to put the strip. So we're going to put the strip up inside this opening right here. I'm going to measure it with my measuring tape and I see that it is 26 and a half inches inside to inside. We're actually going to cut the channel short and we're going to cut it at 25 and 3 quarter. That's going to give us just a little bit of room for the wires to come out of the end and for the end caps. So the best way to cut this aluminum mounting channel is to take the lens out of it and cut it. We're going to use a miter saw. So here I'm just measuring out the channel, marking it before I cut it. You want to use a, a chop saw to cut the aluminum channel and you want to take it nice and easy and slow. Okay, now that we have this cut to length, we have some great options for mounting. The first option that we have is our handy mounting clips. These clips can be screwed directly into whatever project you're doing. We like to use a number four half inch screw. That's really handy. You don't want it up tight like that. You want it pulled out a little bit like this. We're going to use our measuring tape. We are going to put it basically an eighth out there and an eighth out here. Okay, and when we get it where we want it, we're going to use our pencil. Now we have this line here. We're going to use that to line up where we're going to put these clips. Now, depending on the length of the board, you may want to put, I like to put a minimum of three of these clips. Now that being said, if you're going to do three of these clips, you want to make sure that they're all lined up in a straight line. So I take this back here, put this right here. And line everything up because when you go to snap it in place, they have to be lined up. So we're going to mark, we're going to mark these like this. So we have those three marks. Now I'm going to use my number four screw. I'm going to use my number four screw here. This is a number four and it's a half inch long. So we're going to use a bit, a 16th inch bit to put the hole in as a pilot hole. So this is three quarters of an inch thick. We don't want to drill our hole all the way through. So I'm just measuring that to know how deep of a pilot hole to make. So I'm going to use that information right there and I'm going to take a piece of tape and mark my bit. If you can zoom in here, I don't want to go more than say three eighths of an inch thick. So I'm going to take and line up my tape right here and put a little flag on my bit so that when I'm drilling my hole, I know where to stop. So let's go ahead and watch this. If you can. So when I go and drill in, I stop right at that bit point. So look at that. If I stop right there, I know that I haven't gone too deep. A little pro trick.
Now that we have the pilot holes drilled, it's time to mount the clips actually to the board. So we have the shelf removed here to show you the detail, uh, your actual application. If you can do this, it'll be handy. If you can't, I understand it's gonna be harder for you to do it. We're doing that so you can see the details here. So to mount these clips, I like to do it by hand just because if you've ever held on to something like this and put a screw into it, it has a tendency to grab and cut your fingers. And I don't wanna cut my fingers today. So we're just gonna use that number four screw, find our pilot hole right here. And we're gonna, you see that right there? We're gonna push that and get that started. Now you don't wanna over tighten it. These are really fine screws. You just wanna get it so it's snug enough that it holds. Now watch this, get it down there. That's nice and it's not going anywhere. It's firm, it's in place. Now let's put these other two in. Now before you install this channel, I wanna say this, you could pre-assemble, you could lay your strip in here, put your end caps, all of that now, and pop it in place with that all constructed. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just gonna show you the bare channel going in here. So when you have your light bar or your channel created, you wanna come in here, and as you can see, I'm kind of angling this in, putting it against that outer edge. And then I'm looking at my fingers right here, there, there, and there. You wanna make sure they all grab and just pop them into place. And look at that, that channel's, that channel's held in place there. It's not gonna move. Now I have a little forward there. You can just pop it back out again, just like that. A little tight you can just pop it back out of place and you can realign it to exactly where you want it so here we are putting it back in location line up our clip there that's how that mounts so that channel's mounted in there I just showed you the first method for mounting these using clips. The second method eliminates the clips and we're actually going to drill into the channel. So now we're going to show that next. We're going to put that second piece in here. I'm just gonna remove it so that you can see it. This is more for your convenience. Of course, if you're doing this under your cabinets, you're gonna to have to work underneath like this. It's kind of hard to show it on camera. So I'm gonna pull it out to show it to you guys. Now for the second method here, we're actually going to put the channel up right to the edge of this lip right here. We can do that because we're not utilizing the clips. We're gonna be directly mounting this. Now you can give yourself a little bit of space, which is what I'm going to do. I just like to have a little bit of room. So we're gonna go ahead and line that up right here. So we're gonna go ahead and draw a line along here. So we wanna locate our screws uh, evenly spaced along here. So I'm gonna put one here at two inches from the end there, two inches from the end there, and roughly halfway in between the two right here. Uh, you can measure that out. I'm gonna just put one, I'm gonna mark it with my pencil. So we're gonna go two inch, 24 inch, and what's the two there? 22, so it would be 11. So we're gonna put three screws in there. So we're just going to put a hole through the channel here. And the reason we're doing that, we want that screw to go right through the metal. So we're gonna put this drill bit through just the channel here uh, to make our holes. We're gonna do that first before we put our holes into the wood with our pilot hole because we're gonna actually use a smaller size screw or a smaller size drill bit for that pilot hole. So first we're gonna put the holes in the channel and we're using three 30 seconds drill bit with our number four half inch screw. There, it's centered. So if we put the screw in here now, and you look at this from the side, see the head sits up. See how that is? Can you see that from the side there? It's a high point. So that's not good. That's gonna, the LED is gonna be closer to the lens right there. 
and it's gonna make a hot spot. And so to avoid that, we're gonna peel that tape back off of there. We wanna countersink that screw. We're gonna use a countersink bit. So what that will look like, if we're gonna keep it clear there for you to see, we're gonna countersink that hole. Look at how that sits in there. Isn't that beautiful? That's candy. So now, when we tighten that screw down and we lay the strip in there, it's gonna be smooth all the way across. That's why you wanna countersink those holes. So now let's go ahead and do the rest of this and install it. So I switched back to the 1 16th inch drill bit for actually drilling the pilot hole in here. I have my flag on here like before. I go to the center of my countersink hole. You know, sink that in there. And I'm going to go ahead and mount my first screw. So as it finds the center of the hole, it's gonna tend to pull the metal into position. Look at that, it's so nice and smooth. Before we get too far along here, I do want to talk about end caps. For the narrow channel and the wide channel, we do have handy end caps. For the narrow channel, we have these plastic end caps. There's a version with a hole in it and a version without. They simply slide into the ends, just like this. It gives a nice finished uh, look to the ends of the strip. You will want to put these in before you lay your strip light into the channel. So this is the version for the narrow channel. On our demonstration, we're actually using the wide channel. The wide channel has these plates with screws. It is not plastic and it does not come out to the edge. So you will want to probably do this before you're putting this up in the channel. Again, I have this out so that I can show it to you to demonstrate. This is something you'd want to attach before you attach the channel into the surface if you're working up tight. So let's go ahead and put one of these plates on. But you'll want to get that on all the way. Now that we have the end caps onto our channel and the channel is mounted, it's time to talk about strip lights that go into it. Depending on the strip light, it may have different cut lengths. What are cut lengths? Those are the lines that are on the strip with a little, it looks like orange, it's actually a little copper pads that are on the strip at certain locations. You can't just cut the strip wherever you want it. You have to cut at the cut length. That matters to us for this channel because when you go and lay the strip in the channel, you don't want to have the strip be too long and sticking out because that won't work. So you want to make sure that you have the strip cut just long enough so that it fits inside, but isn't too long. Now we're going to lay this out right here. And if you come over here on this end, you can see it actually comes out short. That actually works out really well. And you want to make sure you're perfectly, not angled, you're perfectly on track to cut through that strip. Now that we have the strip cut to length right here, I like to start at the end here where the wires stick out and work back from that. And this is kind of a cool trick that we're gonna do here. We're gonna peel the tape back. Now there's a, a protective cover and there is adhesive tape on the back of this strip. You wanna be careful as you peel back that you don't peel that adhesive tape back too. So we're gonna go ahead and stick that in there and we'll peel that tape back. Now, you want to make sure as you go, you're peeling that tape back. Don't peel it all off at once because then you've got a sticky mess right here. We're just going to peel it back as we go. And notice we're being gentle with this. This is electronics. Oop, getting a little off here so I can peel it up there and just line it back up. Look at that. Now I'm using N series and a W series channel. I would just like to have that little bit of extra room but you can fit up to a W series into our wide channel. So 
great, look at that. Now we have our strip mounted in the channel. Doesn't that look clean? Doesn't that look nice? Now that we have this strip laid in here, this is nice, clean, sharp looking. Remember at the beginning when we cut the channel to length, we removed the lens. That's because cutting that lens with the chop saw will splinter the lens. Now there's an option on these between using either a clear or frosted lens. For our application, we're using a frosted lens. And this is the point where we will actually cut the lens. So I like to take and measure the inside of my channel. See here, let's get that in. So if you look right here, our cut length, we're gonna have it be just shy of 26. Looks like 25 and 7 eighths. We want it to be just a little bit short there because we don't want the lens to buckle inside. So we're actually gonna go 16th under. So we're looking to cut that at 25 and 7 eighths. So we're gonna go ahead and mark the lens here at 25 and 7 eighths, 25 and 7 eighths. Now you could cut that with the scissors here. It's a little hard, kind of hard on the hands. I like to use a tin snips. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So you don't wanna angle it any, anywhere. You wanna have a nice perpendicular cut. So don't, don't angle it, cut nice and square. And it's just a simple cut process like that. So satisfying. And that's our channel mounted without using the mounting clips, using the countersunk method. So we'll go ahead and put this in place here. Ta-da! Thank you for learning all about our aluminum mounting channel. For more helpful videos, light up that subscribe button.